What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another day of Read Rich and Righteous. We are reading my book, Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. Uh, we've been on this journey for almost eight weeks now, and we are halfway done with the book. It's been an absolutely amazing journey. Our community continues to grow. Uh, every single morning, we're here at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on weekdays reading the book. So go ahead and set a phone alarm for that right now if you haven't already done so, and just show up to either YouTube or Instagram. Uh, we are also now on Facebook, but YouTube YouTube and Instagram have been our strongholds. If Instagram messes up today, then go to YouTube. If YouTube messes up today, go to Instagram. All right. Now, um, today, uh, uh, we are going to go pretty quick today. Um, I have to get ready for Generational Wealth Conference, which is happening this weekend. I'm so excited. Uh, over 1,500 people descending on Atlanta for the Generational Wealth Conference. And uh, I just, I can't wait. And I know a lot of you are pulling up and coming through. Uh, live stream tickets are still available for that event. There's no more in-person tickets available, but live stream tickets are available. And you can go to genwealthcon.com. Again, that's genwealthcon.com. Con.com. If you'd like to get a live stream ticket for that, that conference is really going to show you how to take these um, mental principles uh, in terms of our money mindset and actually bring them down into earth into a material reality by identifying an asset class which you are going to use to grow your wealth here on earth. Right. So here we focus on the mental, and then Generational Wealth Conference is really bringing together speakers, friends of mine who have mastered each particular asset class that I find valuable here in this earthly realm and being able to use and choose choose and use those asset classes to build your wealth and actually manifest at a high level. And so um, I am excited to have you all pull up uh, there, whether you come in person or live stream. Um, and uh, when you see me, let me know how these mornings have impacted you. OK. All right. Let me know how these mornings have impacted you. Um, they've been a blessing to me. It is a blessing to be a blessing. And uh, I'm just so grateful uh, to have this community that we've built so far. All right. So um, I uh, I do have a hard stop at um, I do have a hard stop at 910. So I would like to get into the reading ASAP. You know, I can go off. y'all. <laughs> when I start preaching, I can go off. Um, so we're going to get into the reading uh, right now. If you'd like to get a copy of the book, you can go to um, moneyandmanifestation.com. That's moneyandmanifestation.com to get a copy of uh, the book. Uh, the book is $100, um, but when you buy the book at moneyandmanifestation.com, you get five copies, one for you, four for you to give away to other people to stimulate your personal economy. As you give, so you shall receive. The reason many of you aren't receiving at the level that you desire is because you're not giving enough at this moment in time. And so um, that is baked into the process of you purchasing this book. You also get the Rituals Workbook, which anchors all of these financial principles and money mindsets into your actual reality. And then you also get the audio book. All right. So um, we are going to, uh, we have about five pages to read. I do have a hard stop um, at 910 today um, because I have to get ready for the conference. So uh, let's get into it today. Today we are reading... Um, uh, how to get everything you pray for. So we're in the section on how the rich and righteous ask for money and wealth. And so today we're focused on, on how to get everything you pray for. Uh, for those of you who are on these social media platforms, please, please, please um, hit the like button and share this content. We have to break through these algorithms to make sure that we can this message can reach all the people it's meant to reach. So please, Hit the like, um, uh, like and share button. I know on YouTube we have 177 people right there right now, but only 60 likes. So go ahead and like and share this so that um, we can get this message out. Same thing for Instagram <coughs> and on Facebook. All right. So uh, with that, um, let's get started. So we are on page 196. We're about to break the halfway mark of the book today. Um, so again, we've been on this journey for eight weeks and it'll likely carry us uh, through February or March. And shoot, at the end of March, we might start all over. All right. So um, let's see how it goes. So how to get everything you pray for. So when you think of prayer, most of us think of prayer and we think about um, we think about being on bended knee, right, in front of our beds with our eyes closed and our heads down. And uh, typically, we don't pray from a place of power. We pray from a place of weakness. Now, there are moments in your life where you will be weak, and um, you do have to scream out a prayer from that place of weakness and asking for God to be your strength. And God always shows up in that way. But um, as we continue to go through this section, you're going to learn how to pray with power, not from a place of victim consciousness, all right, waiting for some magical savior in the sky to save you. Um, you actually tap into the God consciousness that is already within yourself. Um, so because God has given us everything that we need to succeed. <clears throat> so how to get everything you pray for. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. That's one of our favorite scriptures. We use it and talk about it many times because it lays out the sequence for success, right? And so the sequence is seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That's the first step, okay? And then all these things shall be added unto you. And so let's get into it. Prayer does not only occur when you are on your knees with your hands clasped, heads down, and eyes closed. Most of the time when Jesus prayed, he was standing up in power. Nor is prayer just speaking words out loud. As Matthew 6, 7 says, when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. You can have a conversation in the silence of your own head without moving your lips. But even when you're not speaking, you are still feeling, which means that you are emoting a specific vibration beyond your body into the universe. So even when you're not speaking and even when you're not thinking a word, okay, your feeling is a vibration that is going out into this universe, this ether, and it's making waves. And those waves are what actually lead to the law of attraction, right? Those waves come back and you get that frequency back. So your feelings in and of themselves are prayers, okay? Unless you take no thought through meditation, you will notice that your mind is engaged in a constant conversation at all times. Remember the you and I verse. This is what is called the you and I verse. We are in a constant conversation with our internal reality and our external reality. They are feedback loops. It is a conversation between you, the individual I, and the single I, which is God. Every external and internal word you say, every image you see with your two eyes or imagine with your third eye, every thought and every feeling, frequency and vibration you have and hold is a form of prayer. Okay? Prayer is not just words when you are on your knees in front of your bed. I'm going to repeat that. Every external and internal word you say, every image you see with your two eyes or imagine with your third eye, every thought and every feeling, frequency and vibration you have and hold is a form of prayer. Okay? So that should open your eyes a little bit to think about, wait, I'm always praying, okay? The conversation is ongoing without you going anywhere. And God or the universe responds to you through the law of core respond ints. The law of core respond ints. It responds to what is at your core. The law of correspondence responds to that which is at your core. What is it that you are feeling at your core? You can put on a mask all day, okay? But the universe, God, responds to your core. Okay, and some people say, oh, well, Julian, God is God made the universe, so the universe is not God. God is all there is. And God operates these universal laws through the universe, okay? So if you need to make a distinction in your mind between God and the universe, that's perfectly fine, but God is all there is, period. So God is the universe and God is not the universe at the same time, all right? So some people get so caught up in the semantics because they want to sound right, right? God is all there is, period. So God is the universe and God is also not the universe because God is greater than anything. God is the summation of all, right? So your frequency is shaped by whatever you feel, think, speak, and do frequently. We are no different than our cell phones. Listen to me. We are no different than our cell phones. We are cellular beings constantly sending signals and interacting with other cell you lure beings in a sea of invisible waves. You see how I broke that down? We are cell, you lure beings, constantly sending signals and interacting with other cell, you lure beings in a sea of invisible waves. No wonder they call it an iPhone. No wonder they call it an iPhone. Your brain is the hardware or phone you use to store data and communicate with the world. Just like a cell phone, in between us is ether or energy transmitting vibrations, signals, and waves with information, feelings, thoughts, ideas, codes, and images back and forth. That's no different than your cell phone. Your mind, your body operate no differently than a cell phone. Okay? You must be mindful of the programs on your phone and the information you are transmitting and intaking on a daily basis. You are always connected to the entire network, which is God. 
you are always connected to the entire network, which is God. The internet is a physical manifestation of collective consciousness. Your conscious mind chooses what to search for and your eyes browse the world wide web until they draw unto you what you were looking for as discussed earlier with confirmation bias. On my journey, I've learned not to pray for things. See, a lot of people pray for things, but going back to Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So I seek God first and then all these things that I desire, they find me. I don't seek things. I don't pray for things. They find me. What I do is I seek God. I seek alignment with God on a daily basis. And when I do that, seek God and his righteousness, all these things find me. I don't have to go chase after them. Money, abundance, love, they all find me because I am doing God's work. I'm in alignment with God. That's all God's work means. It doesn't mean you need to go be a preacher, okay? All God's work means that you are in alignment, that you are walking in your God-given purpose, whatever that is. Yours could be working with kids. Yours could be crocheting. Yours could be food. What is your ministry? And are you in it right now? You are not meant to do your purpose part-time. You're meant to do your purpose full-time. But if you lack faith, then what you'll do is you'll substitute and you'll take your talents and your God-given gifts. You'll go give them to somebody else. And then you'll give God the leftovers after work or on the weekends through volunteering. I don't care how much you volunteer. You can volunteer all you want, but if you were not spending the core of your energy, that 40 hours walking in your God-given purpose, it won't even matter. It won't even matter because you could have made a greater impact walking in your purpose than not working in your purpose and volunteering occasionally. On my journey, I've learned not to pray for things. Beggars ask for things. While believers ask for traits, thinking, tools, or teachers that will get you those things. I'm going to repeat that. On my journey, I've learned not to pray for things. Oh, God, send me some money. Oh, God, send me a woman. Oh, God, send me a, a house. Oh, God, send me a job. You're praying for things. We've been taught to pray for things. No, beggars ask for things. While believers ask for the traits, thinking, tools, or a teacher that will get you those things. Often we pray from a place of begging and we pray for things when we pray and when we pray astray, our word returns void. So you wonder why your prayers aren't getting answered because you're asking for things. We treat prayer like a Christmas list full of things we want Christ to bring us. You can't get the fruit unless the seed you planted has taken root. Being is the root. Doing is the cause and having is the effect. Being is the root. You have to be it. That is the root. Doing is the cause, okay? And then having is the effect. The process of manifesting is being, doing, and then having in that order. If you understand that you are the root and cause, uh, things which are effects will happen because of you. Be cause of you. You have to be the cause. Instagram, go to YouTube. Uh, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Come on, man. Go to YouTube. If sound. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. All right. All right, cool. If somebody has a phone, if they can go to Instagram and uh, tell people to go to YouTube, that'd be great. All right, cool. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Ashanti. Go to YouTube, go to YouTube, go to YouTube. I need to write, I need a sign, y'all. <laughs> I need a sign. And now, share, share. I'll start over, but um, I need a sign. It says, go to YouTube. <laughs> All right, we are back on IG. Um, 
sorry about this, y'all. We're gonna figure this out one day. All right. Okay, cool. So having is the last step. Having is the last step. Okay. When you change your be have yours. Okay. Look at how I broke down that word. Be have yours. Be have yours. When you change your behaviors, what you become comes to you. When you change your behaviors, what you become comes to you. You understand that? When you change your be have yours, okay? What you become comes to you. This is a different approach, okay? Don't ask how to make more money first. That's not the question to ask, okay? Ask how to think about money first, which is the root or unseen level of being. Did you hear that? Don't ask how to make more money first. You're asking for the thing. You're praying for the thing. Ask how to think about money first, which is the root or unseen level of being. Then ask, what do I need to do to make money? Okay. And then once I make money, how do I have it or hold it in the most healthy and heavenly way possible? When I pray for traits, thinking, tools, and teachers, I find that my prayers are always answered through me, not for me. When I pray for traits, thinking, tools, and teachers, I find that my prayers are always answered through me, not for me. Because if my prayers are answered for me, then I'm always waiting on something outside of myself for an answer and solution. But if I now can answer my own prayers through me, because God is working through me, right? And as me, that is the most powerful way. Not only are they answered, I end up attracting something even better than my mind could have imagined. You can't have more without being more, family. You can't have more without being more. You want to have more, but you want to be the same. You want to have more, but you want to be the same. How is that going to work? You can't want everything to change for you without you changing everything. The true goal of prayer is to change you. Better yet, it is to remind you of all that you already are. The true goal of prayer is to change you. It is not to change your situation. It is not to change your boss. It is not to change your spouse. It is not to change your mom or your dad or your kids. It is not to change your financial situation. The true goal of prayer is to change you. Better yet, it is to remind you, remind, meaning that it was already in your mind, but you it got rewritten over. It got programmed over. So we are reminding, meaning that it was already there. Better yet, prayer is to remind you of all that you already are. There's nothing to add to you. In fact, there's more to take away. All the programming that was put on top of you by parents, society, celebrities, media, politicians, all that programming that was put on religion, that we have to actually take that off. There's nothing needed to be. You don't have to add anything to you. God made you perfect, whole and complete. There's nothing to add. There's no additional ingredients to add. What we're doing is chiseling away all the things that people put on top of you and getting you back to your true, authentic self, getting you back to the Garden of Eden where you are in your purest form. So traits. The first thing you can pray for is the traits of the person who naturally and easily has all of the things you want as a part of their experience. So again, I'm not praying for money. I'm praying for the traits to be in me or to activate the traits that are in me, already in me, that align with the traits of people who have money. Christians often ask themselves, what would Jesus do? A better question is, how would Jesus be? All of our doing emerges from our being. Are we being loving or selfish? 
Are we being forgiving or resentful? Are we being compassionate or cold? Are you being faithful or fearful? Be, do, have. This is the process. We are looking for the being first, looking at a person's nature, looking at a person's essence. That is what we observe first, not their having. That's typically what the two eyes see first is the having. They see them, the eyes see the material things, but we're trying to feel into someone's essence. Who are they being? This person is generous. This person is grateful. This person is godly. This person is in alignment. This person is at peace. This person has joy. We are looking at their being because it is the being that shapes the doing and then the doing shapes the having. But if you only lock in on what they have, then you're going to miss the being, which then shapes the doing, which then shapes the having. The next thing we want to look for is the thinking of that person. OK, the next thing you can pray for is the thinking of the person who naturally and easily has all of the things you want as a part of their experience. First Corinthians 2 16 says we have the mind of Christ. So ask yourself, how does a millionaire think? Don't look at what a millionaire has. Ask yourself, how does a millionaire think? See, traits and thinking are internal. So we're not focused on trying to have a car like them or a house like them or a spouse like them. No, we're focused on their traits and their thinking. Because if we take those two things in, be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind, then guess what? We will start to move and manifest in the same way that millionaires do. But becoming a millionaire first starts with our identity first, not with what we have. Okay, so I'm only using a millionaire as an example, but you can interchange that identity for anything else, such as a great leader. How does a great leader think? A loving husband or loving wife. How does a loving husband and loving wife think? Supportive parent, vegetarian. How's a, how does a vegetarian think about traveling? They don't know if they're going to be vegetarian options there. How does a vegetarian think about traveling through the airport where they're going to be offered fast food options? How do they think about that? Okay. How does an entrepreneur think? We are focused on, on the financial due to the nature of this book, but this is a universal process. How does a millionaire think about money, debt, relationships, health, time, personal development, asking for help, hiring help, etc.? How does a millionaire think about all these aspects? We pray for divine downloads on how a millionaire thinks, even if we don't have access to a millionaire mentor in the moment. To become a higher version of who you are, you have to undo the programming and limiting beliefs that keep you as you are and where you are. The thinking that got you here will not get you there. You can only go as far as your thinking and vision allow you to go. We have to rewrite the code or download new programs of people who are where we want to be. So the first thing we pray for is the traits. The second thing we pray for is the thinking, okay? The next thing we pray for is the tools, okay? Tools. We can also pray for tools. Now, tools can be internal or external. Oftentimes, God doesn't give us what we pray for in the finished form. But it, if we assess everything we already have, we realize, meaning that we see with our real eyes, that we are already have all the raw materials we need to create anything that really matters to us. Oftentimes, God doesn't give us exactly what we pray for in the finished form. But if we assess everything we already have, we realize, meaning that we're able to see with our third eye, okay, that we already have all of the raw matter materials, materials, the things that matter, right? We're turning matter into things, the raw materials we need to create anything that really matters to us. Everything is already here, but we may be, not be able to see it. What do I mean by that, family? Do you realize that the... um. Uh, let me just keep going. It took a it took mankind a while to see fire, though the dry wood and the kindling process were already here. Okay, so man was cold for a long time, but was fire here or was fire not here? Was fire here or fire not here? Man was cold. Okay, he not he seen any demonstration of fire unless. Lightning struck a tree and started a fire, okay? But guess what? Even though man had not seen it yet, even though man was cold, fire was already here. It was already here in the form of the dry wood and in the form of the 
kindling process. Those were already here that the, the caveman just couldn't see it with his mind. The caveman and cave woman, whoever could not see it with their mind, but fire was already here, not in its finished form though. It took mankind a while to see an arrowhead, though rocks in the shaving process were already here. Huh, I need a sharp rock to pierce this animal so that I can eat. Well, rocks have already always been here. And I figured out a way to shave rocks so now I can get this sharp arrowhead, which now will make it easier for me to kill food to eat. But the arrowhead was already here. I just couldn't see it for a while, quite some time, okay? It took us a while to see electricity, though currents and conductors and energy generation and energy generation processes were already here. Electricity was already here, family. It just took us a while to see it. It took us a while to see the airplane, though the materials, the raw materials of an airplane, the laws of aerodynamics and birds were already here. Many of man's creation from a submarine, right? Where do we get a submarine from? We saw a fish or we saw a dolphin. We said, whoa, I want to be able to do that. Where do we get an airplane from? We saw birds flying and said, hmm, something is keeping them afloat. Can we do that? A lot of our creations we see and get from Mother Nature. Okay. Guess what? When the pyramids were built, family, you know what was here? The iPhone was here when the pyramids were built. The iPhone was here when the pyramids were built. All of the raw materials needed to create an iPhone were here when the pyramids were built. It just took us a long time to grasp that idea and that concept in our mind. So you're understanding right now that everything that you need and desire is already here. It's already here. It's just not in its finished form. So what you're asking for is the mind to be able to see it, the third eye to be able to see it. OK, but then you're also asking for the tools that you need to put the puzzle pieces together. All of these tools advance humanity and spark millions of additional innovations. Similarly, all the tools you need to advance your life are likely already here, but you need to believe that they are here in order to see them. That relationship you need is already in your phone, or you will meet someone, you will meet them soon as long as, they, as, long as you keep showing up. That money is already in your 401k or coming in another unexpected way. That technology you need has already been made open source and is free to use. We get the opportunity to build what we want, but sometimes we just need the tools to put everything together. There is joy in the journey. The greatest story is the unfoldment process, not just the arrival at the end destination. Okay? So everything is already here. That man you want, family, he's already here. That woman you want, She's already here. Okay. If you exist, then they exist. If you exist, then they exist. There is somebody for you on your exact same frequency. People say, oh, well, no, there's more women in the world. It's like 50, it's like 50.5% women. The world is like 50.5% women and uh like 49.5% men. That's divine design, family. Go to YouTube. All my Instagrammers, go to YouTube, please. I don't know why my phone alarms. Turn off the audio on Instagram. Okay. Cool. All right, last page. The last thing we're looking for is teachers, teachers. And finally, if you are having difficulty accessing the traits, thinking, and tools of millionaires, of a millionaire through your mind, then you must pray for a teacher who has those traits, the right thinking, and who's willing to train you in the tools. Every millionaire is not willing to teach or may not be called to teach. When you start seeking out a teacher, it means that you recognize that you don't know it all, that you don't have it figured out, and that you're open to having good seeds planted in your mind so that you can bear the fruit that you truly desire faster. Proverbs 19.20 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. You don't have to till your own mind alone, family. 
The do-it-yourself mentality may feel like it's saving you money, but it is likely costing you time and money. Finding the right teacher can accelerate your process by years. Learning from the right teacher will save you tons of time. So if you're having difficulty accessing the traits, the thinking, and the tools you need to get what you desire on your own, then you look for, you pray for, and pay for a teacher to show you. And they will turn decades into days for you. Uh, the right teacher will turn decades into days for you. Okay? Last paragraph on page 200. When you pray, don't limit yourself by praying for specific things. And, and I'll be honest with you. I'm a millionaire teacher. I'm a millionaire teacher. You're, I'm teaching you the traits, thinking, and tools that I use to manifest. So you're able to tap in right now through me. And I'm not the only one. I hope I'm not the only millionaire in your life. But you're able to tap in to it through me. Okay? One of the tools is Rich and Righteous. Another one of the tools is the Rituals Workbook. Another one of the tools that I have is the Multifamily Movement, right? Another tool that I have is Generational Wealth Conference. These are tools and things that you can tap into to accelerate your journey. But most importantly, what I documented was my thinking and my traits that I use to manifest at a high level, okay? Go to YouTube. All right. Okay. When you pray, don't limit yourself by uh, when you pray, don't limit yourself by praying for specific things. Instead, focus on who you need to be to get what you want to have. Being is the part many people try to bypass. You know they spell bypass B Y P A S S, but many of us try to buy our way past the being. I'm going to look rich. I'm going to look rich. I'm going to buy my way to riches when you trying to look rich is actually putting you into debt. You trying to look rich is putting you into debt. Because you're trying to bypass the work of shifting your being. That is the harder work. You're trying to bypass the true work. The true work is not a long to-do list item. It's not even in the doing phase. The true work is our being. The true work is our being. Okay. Being is the part many people try to bypass. They want to skip to doing and having. Your being will shape your doing and your doing will lead to your having. Instant manifestation is amazing when it happens, but it is unsustainable if you haven't transformed. By changing the order and committing to the process of changing yourself from within will allow you to get everything that you want in the order it is meant to come through prayer. Praying for specific things may cause you to feel stress and produce thoughts of fear, doubt, worry, or scarcity because it feels like you have to rely on something outside of yourself for it to come. But when you know that everything you want comes from within you, you feel empowered to create your own destiny and have anything you truly desire. So what are we looking for? What are we praying for? We're praying for traits. We are praying for thinking and we are praying for tools. And if those things do not naturally come to us through divine downloads directly from source, directly from God, then we pray for a teacher who has those things. And in some cases, we may have to pay for that teacher in order to access them. OK, so that is how you get everything that you pray for. The secret is stop praying for things. Stop praying for things. Don't pray for the job. Pray for the skill sets, the traits, the relationships that will get you a job. Don't pray for a man or a woman. Pray for the character traits, for the thinking of a husband, for the thinking of a wife. Where would, where would a husband find a wife? Where would a wife find a husband? You go to that place. Yet you still go into the clubs on Friday and Saturday nights looking for your wife or for your husband. 
That is not the thinking of a husband or a wife. So stop going to those places. And then you pray for the tools. What kind of tools do I need? Okay. In order to become a great husband or a great wife, I actually might need, um, I might have to do my Myers-Briggs. So I understand myself better. I might have to do my strength finders. I might have to go through my five love languages so I can understand why I didn't feel loved in my last relationship. These are tools. So now that I understand myself better, I'm understanding who I am, my being, then guess what? It's going to make it easier for me to attract a relationship that is in alignment with who I am. So we pray for the traits, the thinking, and the tools needed to attract what we want. We do not pray for the thing. And in certain cases, we pray for a teacher or we pay for a teacher to accelerate that process for us, right? So that concludes our reading for today. Um, and uh, we will, even though I have Generational Wealth Conference starting on Friday, um, I, uh, I, can, I can be here at 8.30 tomorrow. Um, I can still be here at 8.30 tomorrow, okay? So uh, tomorrow we'll be discussing the five levels of prayer. This is one of the most powerful sections of the book. It's going to revolutionize how you've been praying. We're going to walk through them step by step each level. And um, if you have the book, honestly, I encourage you to read that in advance. I'll, I'll come in and I'll go into more depth when we read it tomorrow. But if you have the book, I encourage you to read that in advance. You're going to need to hear that multiple times because that will help you identify where what level of prayer you've been at. And guess what? Religion has taught us to pray at the bottom level. Religion has taught us to pray at the bottom level. I'm going to teach you how to pray from the top. All right. So uh, with that, um, I love you and I appreciate you. And I thank you for being here. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Even though Generational Wealth Conference is about to pop off, I can be here at 8.30 tomorrow. Um, so we'll be reading the five levels of prayer. Uh, Jen Wellcon, there are some live stream tickets left. So you can go to genwealthcon.com. Genwealthcon.com will be together all day, Saturday and Sunday. It is an amazing lineup of speakers. Um, I'm presenting several times on various things that I know will be powerful and transformative for your life. For those of you just joining us, you can go to uh, moneyandmanifestation.com to get the book. You can go to moneyandmanifestation.com to get uh, the Rich and Righteous book. Um, you get five copies for $100 plus the Rituals Workbook plus the audiobook. So that is available to you. And then um, uh, I did talk about relationships today. Um, if you are uh, trying to get out these dating streets and you're seriously um, looking to be a wife, remember, focus on your being. You're not looking for a husband. Based on today's teaching, you're not looking for a husband. That's the thing. You're not looking for a wife. That's the thing. What are you looking for? You're not looking for a husband. You're not looking for a wife. What are you looking for? Based on today's teaching, what are you looking for? You are looking to be a wife. You are looking to be a husband. And once you step into that being, guess what will happen? You will start attracting people who will potentially be your wife. You'll start attracting people who will potentially be your husband. So stop looking for a husband. Stop looking for a wife. That's the thing. What you're praying for is the traits, the thinking, and the tools that a wife would have, that a husband would have. And once you stand in that and you hold that and you actually practice those things in your daily life, right? And once you start to do those things, it'll naturally come, family. It'll naturally come. All right? So with that, sending you love. Set a phone alarm. See you at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. All the links that I just shared are at getfreenow.com. They're at getfreenow.com. So the tickets to Generational Wealth Conference um, to get the uh, get the book, um, Money uh, Rich and Righteous, and um, to sign up for the 100 Adult Men and 100 Adult Women program, which is kicking off in February. Um, all of those links are there at getfreenow.com. Okay? Getfreenow.com. All right? See you later, y'all. Much love. Peace.